people look at things when they first get become, become a parent and how things get over the years. You know, I thought of my own mama and I was the guinea pig, amen. Of course, in my situation, this is exactly opposite. But, I was going to tell you, a, a woman had five, a guy said I had five siblings, three sisters and two brothers. One night I was chatting with my mom about how she had changed as a mother from the first child to the last. She laughed and she told me about how she had mellowed over the years. Anybody ever mellowed over the years with the parenthood? When your oldest sister coughed or sneezed, I called 911. When your youngest brother swallowed a dime, I just told him it was coming out of his allowance. <laughs> okay, DC swallowed a quarter. I, I made him eat a box of raisin bran, but never got the quarterback. But we get we did get two dimes and a nickel. <laughs> Going downhill fast. I'm gonna throw that joke book. Oh, where's that thing? I'm gonna throw that as far as I can throw it. Y'all, y'all looking at it like a mule looking at a new gate. Amen. God's awesome. All right, how about this then? How about them Dookie boys? Can't they play? Yeah, when you get, they, look, they still weren't firing it off. They still weren't firing it all cylinders because they still had some guys injured sitting on the bench, but they still were awesome last night. Matter of fact, the last two nights, if y'all, if anybody watches basketball, when UNC and Duke played together on Friday night, I believe that was the best Duke Carolina matchup I had seen because it was just, it was, you never knew. You just never knew. And, that, and it was just so awesome, even to the very end. I, and and Lynn looked at me and said, you're not going to start throwing things, are you? I said, no. She said, you're not going to start hollering, are you? I said, no. She said, too late. But when Duke, when Duke pulled it out, it was awesome. And last night, they were just awesome. So, so uh, again, that's all you're going to hear about Duke until they play again. <laughs> Amen. I, I was thinking about D.C. last week. D.C. actually, he just started preaching my sermon today. Uh... Actually, I'm telling you, there's going to be a bunch of different places, so I didn't even know where to go with our sermon top or our text, so I don't even actually have a text. I just got to kind of, it kind of worked out in a talk, but as I was working, I was also, I was at a mass yesterday at Farmville, and while I was sitting there doing the stuff at Farmville, looking over the things we had to do, because I was a spiritual director there yesterday, uh, of course, y'all you guys, and I'll put y'all on the spot, will appreciate this. I walked in the door, and as I walked in the door, they said, you know you're the head spiritual director today. I said, no, I didn't. They said, yes, sir. Come on up here and do communion and whatever things you got to do right now. And I said, DC and all those guys and Brandon and, and all those, y'all would love that to have been right there when they got thrown on me all at one time. So, so yes, so, so the Lord does, the Lord vengeance his mind, saith the Lord. Amen. All right. How many has ever felt like quitting? It's okay, nobody's going to shoot you. I promise you, everybody in here at one time or another has felt like quitting. And so I was looking at this, and, and really I, 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 I thought about times getting tough. I thought about D.C. last week, and, and of course I just can't, and I won't get out of line ever, I know, but I'm thinking about Bethany, and last week was a tough week because there were some things that happened, just happened, you know, that reminded me of Bethany. And, and so, and, and, so, and then when I went to a, a mass yesterday, uh, I was talking about God's got this, and somebody wrote a song in the mass called God's Got This. And so we even sang it yesterday in the mass, God's Got This, and one of the guys said, that's going to be our theme this year, I think it's God's Got This. So, so again, all this stuff's been hard, uh, 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 on my heart, and, and I think about other things that we've all gone through all our lives. However, that's one of us in here, we're going through something. If you're not going through something, raise your hand. And we're going to pray for that line spirit. <laughs> Amen? Everybody in here is going through something. Another problem is we don't necessarily know that everybody else is going through something. Here's why. When you see me up here, or when you see me on the road or see me somewhere, all you see is a snapshot. See it. You get a Polaroid. And you're thinking, wow, that guy's smiling, that guy's got it made. Look at him. Good God, I wish I had his hand. I throw mine in, up in. And then I can look at you and when you're looking at yourself, you're looking at your entire history. So you brought your entire game tape. You're watching me, and all you see is a snapshot. With yourself, you see the entire game shape, uh, the, 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 the film roll of, of your entire life. And so, so in the same way with me, I watch you sometimes, and, and I'm thinking, man, the Lord's really blessing them. And then I'm thinking, wait a minute, i got to stop, because I'm only looking at a snapshot. That's it. I'm looking at a picture. 
And when I think about what I'm going through, you know, uh, in the last, since Bethany died, I think I've done four funerals since Bethany died. I did one last weekend. And it's just, it just never stops. And, and, and between 20, 24, or 21, 24, 86, it's just, just constant. You know, and other things going on. So, but, but when things get tough, it's easy to want to throw your hat in. It's easy to want to throw the towel in. It's easy just to want just to quit and just back away or walk off or, or just to let somebody else have it because this thing's just getting too tough. Well, well uh, it's really kind of cool that, that in this semester, uh, I, just, I just completed 36 hours of psychology and I'm psyched out. Matter of fact, after the 36th hour, I feel stupid. I'm so stupid right now, I can probably even put one foot in front of another. Tomorrow, I study the worst I get. I'm thinking, good God, but if I study anymore, I'm going to have to get, going to have to hook me up to a brainwave machine to make me think. Okay? And so this time, they did cut some slack. I'm doing no psychology for the first time in a year and doing uh, uh, conflict management. And as I'm doing conflict management, I'm looking at it, reading, I'm thinking, wow, you know, I thought about this way before, but I really hadn't thought about this way before, and, 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 and you know, uh, uh, they explain it like this, uh, there is left-handed Christians, and there's right-handed Christians. The left-handed Christians, they're all about mercy, and grace, and keeping the peace. The right-handed Christians are all about the law, and keeping things like it should be. And defending it if they have to. And they don't realize that God has got a left hand and a right hand. He's not just all this and he's not just all that. He's got both hands. He knows when to use each one. Amen. And so at the same time, I was reading that stuff and going through this stuff and doing funerals and all this last week. And, 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 and then there was even a day where Dorothy and Billy wound up at the hospital both at the same time. It was just crazy, the stuff that was going on. And, and so, so again, when life gets tough, it's not time to give up. It's time to grab a hold and to know that God's getting ready to promote you to another level. That's what's happening. You know, in school, how many times have you ever gone to another level without being tested first? And during the test, how many times was the teacher talking? Usually during the test, the teacher was silent. So think about this thing. A lot of us are going through tests right now. We're trying to talk to God. We're not hearing him talk. It's because the teacher is silent. You're taking your test. Life is tough. Things are getting rough. And you're beginning to wonder if it's even worth it anymore. So, so just, just, just like I said, this is more like a, a conversation I was having with myself and, and, and doing some independent studying and also doing some stuff on Tuesday night here. I, I want you to see something here. Four reasons why you shouldn't give up when the, tough, when the going gets tough. You know, I want you to say this with me. Life will never say me instead of you, though. Say, life will never take me. Say it. Where God's grace cannot sustain me. Life will never take me. Where God's grace cannot sustain me. Now, now for the last couple of weeks, we're leading up to this about depression. Uh, this uh, uh, stuff that's coming up, it's probably going to be, all this is going to probably get. It happened exactly after the Emmaus walk, okay? And we got Easter coming up, and we got Emmaus, so probably all this will happen after Emmaus and after Easter. But here it goes. You know, we're talking about all, uh, Tuesday nights and how to relax in God's grace. And so, this is an acrostic with relax, and the very first one, I'm not going to go through the whole study because it's so awesome and it's so long. Uh, it's taken us three weeks, and we finally got, we're getting to the X this week. So, so, so finally, we're going to get through the relaxing Part, but, but I can tell you, the people that have been here have all told me that they feel so much better when they start putting these principles in their life. And even, uh, uh, you might not even use you, Andy, what you said. Andy said, I didn't even realize, I didn't realize how tense I was. I didn't realize how, what was going on inside of me until I started doing this stuff. And then as I started feeling the release, then I realized, wow, I'm feeling so much better. Okay? But look, number one, R, realize nobody's perfect. Nobody. When you're looking at a person, just remember this. All you're seeing is a snapshot. That's all you see. A snapshot. Even if you see them two or three times a week, you just got an album going with snapshots in it. You've got to live with that person. That's why I tell people when they get married, they go, Oh, I can live with this person forever. We don't fight. We don't argue. There's never a problem. Everything's hunky door. It's heaven on earth. I said, Yeah, you say that now. And then I'm looking, of course, you know, I said there's the three rings, there's the engagement ring, the wedding ring, and then the suffering. 
<laughs> yeah, the three rings of marriage. So what? Realize that nobody's perfect. The Bible says nothing is perfect except your words, God, okay? Number two, enjoy God's unconditional love. L, let God handle things in your life. A, act in faith, not fear. And E, as actually hits, exchange your perfectionism for God's peace. So that's, that's what we're going to do this week to finish that up. But, but and I just want to talk, talk to you today about the reasons why you shouldn't give up. You know, uh, fear, whenever you let fear come into your heart and fear begins to, to get in here, you can tell when fear is starting to get into your heart because your heart starts beating hard. Uh, and you start having doubts, and you begin to think, have I ever done something wrong, God? I'm moving in the wrong direction, God, this thing's really bad. You know, what have I done? And, uh, I'm nothing. I'm, and then you start hearing all these things like, like I told you, I think I told you all last week, I'm not sure. Uh, 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 Saturday, I think I told you guys on Tuesday, Saturday night, last Saturday night, I walked in the living room, and Adam Sandler's movie, Big Daddy, was on. As I was watching Big Daddy, he's trying to, to foster this child and, and, and all the things they were going through, and it just brought it back to Bethany. And so I was laughing, next time I'm crying. I'm thinking, this is not cool. I mean, this is hitting me hard. For this to be a comedy, it's hitting me hard. And so I get up and walk into the other room. When I get walked to the room, just to get my breath. There's a great big teddy bear that we had up here at her by her urn. It's sitting in the chair that she always sat in when she wasn't feeling good and didn't want to be around anybody. It's sitting in the chair just like her, just life size, and it was leaned over like she used to lean over. And so I, I saw that. I said, oh, no, it's getting worse. So I turned my head, literally turned my head, and I saw her urn sitting there with a light on it. And, 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 and we've got uh, the program from her funeral there. And I said, I said, oh. So I walked in the kitchen to get some water. I walked in the kitchen to get some water. The never lie has started. If you had been a better daddy, she'd have never died. If you had taken her sooner, she would not have had to go to what she went through. If you had it, if you had it, she would have never, 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 never. And I was preaching the next day, I'm leaving Neverland. And so I said, you know what? I'm getting a first-hand account now of what tomorrow's sermon's about. You're not going to consume my mindset. You're not going to get me caught up in the never lies. I'm not even going to rent space in Neverland today. You're, you're a liar, and I know you are, and this is coming from you. It's not coming from God. God brings conviction, but the devil brings condemnation. This is condemnation. I'm not going to take it. And I walk right back in and sit down and finish watch that movie, and I, I shifted my focus, and I just laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. And I said, I'm not going to live with you always trying to keep me in their land, and you always trying to keep me in fear. And so last week was an awesome thing. Uh, I was living it before I actually preached it the next day. So, so fear... Shifts my focus from power to problems. DC and I were talking. DC and I were telling us, okay, you and me both. We're right, we're right down the road to the church. DC's sitting in the truck waiting for the record to come. He's already gone. He's still waiting out in the swamp. He's got his tire. He's sitting there waiting in his, waiting in his, in his uh, truck for the record to come. We're talking. And he's talking about what had happened. And again, I could see it was getting tenser and tenser and tenser. And so I said, you know, DC, I got that. I, I, I did like you said, I went and got that pavilion. I got a, 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 a HP pavilion, and it's a 360. I said, it's not the most expensive thing, but it's not the cheapest. And uh, thanks for doing it. DC said, what does that got to do about trucking the ditch? <laughs> he said, you just boot, there it is. What, what are you talking about, Dad? Don't you, Mark was like, don't you care? Don't you see where I'm at? I said, son, if we kept going in the direction we were going in, somebody's going to get hurt. I said, I need to shift your attention quickly. He said, oh, okay. That's a pretty cool computer. Let's talk back about this problem again. Okay. Now, fear shifts your focus from, your, from power to solve the problem to being consumed with the problem. Matter of fact, I put it this way. Faith may not stop the problem. Hear me? Hear me good. Faith may not stop the problem. But it will bring peace, and it will bring comfort, and it will bring help. Doesn't mean it's going to stop. You know, uh, uh, I have a talk at a mass, and I'm trying to incorporate Bethany into this talk uh, about how God, even in the midst of her death, all the way through her death, how God used her, and how God did so much for so many people. And and I'm still every day, every day. I don't mean I'm not talking about. Every so often, every day, somebody calls me, talks to me, texts me, and tells me, 
how much Bethany meant to them and what she did and the example that she said and how she was always smiling no matter how bad she was. And some said, they keep saying, we didn't realize how sick she was because she was always so joyful and always just so full of life. And, and so, so again, it didn't stop her from dying. But watch, it brought us peace, it brought us comfort, and it brought us help. Matter of fact, when you look at your problems in faith, what it does is, watch, it takes the problems out of your hand and it puts them in God's hands. Some of us right now are holding on to our problems so hard, we can't let it go. We're scared to let go of them because we think we let go of them, after we will lose control. If we lose control, it's over. You know what? How many got that mighty army yesterday that says, says usually it's when we come to the end of our thinking that God gives us his ideas. It's when we come to the end of our own ideas. We've got nothing that, is there somebody else still getting mighty army? I keep putting y'all in. What is that? You can get like 50 of them because I keep adding y'all in and then in. Well, I, I think if anybody's got Verizon, if you're not getting, you got Verizon, something about Verizon and U.S. Cellular and that app in between, it just sometimes don't work and sometimes you get a, a bunch of them. Poor Frankie, she won't get any. Now she gets them all over the place. I mean, they, they come here and I even try to take them out and she still gets a bunch of them. Amen. So, uh, uh, so, so, Faith takes the problem out of your hands and puts them in God. But, watch this, fear will never stop the problem. Faith may not stop the problem, but fear will never stop the problem. It extends, it compounds your problem, and uh, it depletes peace, comfort, and our problem stays in our hand. It's our problem. we got to take care of it. We own it now. How many like owning problems? And if you can afford, you may own a problem. Okay, if you had a Chevrolet, you had a problem. You know, the other day I saw, I saw, I saw uh, uh, a friend of mine working with a Procter & Gamble. He's a big guy. And he was at Lowe's, and I looked at him and said, he was driving a great old big Ford truck. And I said, when I grow up, I'm going to be just like you. I'm going to get me a big truck, but mine's not going to have whatever that sign is. Mine's going to have a ram on it. And I'm going to have tell my wife, because she says, yeah, when you really grow up, you're going to get a bow tie on it. Y'all look kind of like 
I'm not sure what you look like. Here you go. Here's puzzles. Alright. There it is. Tomorrow is going to be a better day. Maybe not Monday. It might not be Tuesday. It might not be Wednesday. But your tomorrow is coming. The Bible says weeping endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. They were weeping means emotional breakdown. It means lips are not just to have a tear, but it means that everything within you wants to quit and wants to run the other way. That may endure, and that endure means literally it's a weight on you, it's on your shoulders. That intense emotional pain will be on your shoulders for a while. But joy it comes in the morning. That word morning means breakthrough, so it doesn't mean 24 hours. It means when God breaks it through. You know, uh, I, I like to think about this, and again, I just write stuff down. You know, however bad, however bad things may look today, take comfort that tomorrow will be a better day. A lot of us would make a lot of better decisions if we could learn to sleep on it. You know why? Because we make emotional decisions. And when you make emotional decisions, you mess up. If I'm making my decision based on my emotions at the moment, then I can do something that can harm a relationship from here to eternity, and it shouldn't have been if I just slept on it. You know, why you sleep on it? Why do I tell us to sleep on it? Because remember I told you, it's during that time when you have dreams, dreams of when your mind's trying to work out what's going on in your life and it's trying to help you figure out what's happening. How many ever gone to bed with a problem and, and couldn't figure it out? So many times, could not figure it out. And during the night, all of a sudden, something happened when you, when you were resting and your brain was doing restorative. Your brain, your brain restores itself every night when you sleep, but you got to be in REM sleep to restore. And if you don't get enough sleep, and if you just get a little bitty sleep where you just kind of snooze and that's it, then nothing's going to happen. It's going to get worse. But if you can get some REM sleep and dream, guess what? When you get up in the morning, God will have helped you work out your problem. And so, so I can't tell you how many times I went to bed when it was a problem of spiritual, mental, emotional, whatever the problem was, a problem at work. I go to bed not knowing what to do and wake up in the morning and all of a sudden it hit me. Well, you know what? I'm sure glad I slept on that. Because if I had to slept on it, I'd have messed up. I'd have messed up in my marriage. I'd have messed up in a relationship. I'd have messed up on my job. I'd have messed up on something. But I'm glad that I stopped without making emotional decisions and let God talk to me. You say, I love this. It may be Friday now, but Sunday's coming. Amen? That's the greatest example in the world. They had all these aspirations about Jesus. He was going to be the king. He was going to rule the world. He was going to rule the Romans. He was going to rule religion. He was going to take care of it all. And that's why they were so afraid and why they ran and were so scared because they were not. we got to cut the disciples a little bit of slack. They weren't expecting what they got. They were expecting one thing and got another. And when Jesus was being beat, they just don't, couldn't even believe what they were seeing. And then they put him in the tomb. He died. They put him in the tomb. But you know what? Hey, hey, it may be for your Friday, but Sunday's coming. Amen? Because on Sunday morning, he was alive and well. Amen? So uh, here, here's my favorite verse. I, I use this a lot during Bethany sickness. It's actually Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. If you can do that, calm down. Take a deep breath. Some of y'all, how many here besides me has got ADHD? I'm going to give you a little something that's going to help you right now. Okay, stop. Don't go to the and give out a bunch of drugs, okay? Sit down. What I do is sometimes I just go to Starbucks and give me some of that John Wayne coffee. You say, well, why has that got to do with the price of tea in China? Very simply. If you've got ADHD, you know what they give you to help that? Stimulants. So what I do is, watch. If I can sit down, I, 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 I was amazed. I couldn't even think about my sermon. I couldn't think about my sermon. I couldn't think about this, that. I go sit in Starbucks and all of a sudden I start writing all this stuff down. And finally it hit me one day, especially when I've been in psychology and read about what was going on. I said, well, no wonder. I'm giving myself, I'm medicating myself. Amen. Starbucks is the cure for ADHD. Calm down. Give it 
to God. Trust in Him with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, everything you've got. Give it to Him and say, God, I don't understand this place I'm in. I don't understand it. I can think about it just recently. I, I can think of four or five things I can't, I can't figure out. I don't know why it's happening. It drives me up the wall. It hurts beyond hurt. But you know what? At the same time, as I give it to Him, God just always winds up talk, sending back good things to me. Amen? If you'll trust the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. Don't try to fix it yourself. Before you know it, things will suddenly start to make sense. Amen? Look at somebody say, quit trying to fix it. And let God do it. So, here in school, this is one reason. Look, so look, so watch this here. Look, so, tomorrow's a better day. That's one reason why you don't need to quit. It ain't over yet. I love what Junior Bear, he used to say some of the greatest things. He said, it ain't over till it's over. Amen? Okay. All right, so here we go. I said, Junior Bear, not Junior Bear. Junior Bear said, hey, <laughs> Is it a pick and a basket? <coughs> All right. Number two. <laughs> Save that joke. <laughs> yeah. I was saying that for a hard time. <laughs> All right. Again, I was doing a study on faith. Service. 
it's just before you always get to say just before you preach. I get ready to preach, he goes walking up and says, I wish I'd have brought my broom today. And then it hit me, oh, Carolina won both of those games against the other team. Got a clean sleep. I looked at him and said, tomorrow's coming. You wait until they get the other guys playing again and watch what happens. And who are the ACC champions? Tournament champions. ACC tournament champions, yeah. Who are they? Somebody. I couldn't say it. I told you I wouldn't say it. That's what I said to say it. Who? <laughs> Of 
of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of them all. There's going to be times that you're going to have friction come against you. I can sit back and I think about some of the frictions I've gone through in the last few weeks. And I think about D.C. when he called me. Uh, when he called me at 530 in the morning, I said, this can't be good. He said, Daniel, I'm on Wichita Beach Road. I'm in the ditch. I said, are you okay? I can't ask the other guy, are y'all dead? No, okay. I said, D.C., are you okay? He said, yes, sir. I said, do you need me to go get you? He said, no, sir. I said, okay, now tell me what's going on. Many are the frictions of the righteous. Now watch this, that's the negative. Something's coming against you, you don't really want coming against you, but you don't realize. You know, how many how many's ever smelled fertilizer? Especially old-fashioned fertilizer. Old-fashioned fertilizer. It comes from the exhaust of the mules and comes from the exhaust of the uh, oxes. Smells bad, don't it? <laughs> but it's amazing how it makes things grow. Some things in your life are stinking right now. You don't realize that it's fertilizer. It's taking care. And also it's helping the friction. All right. So here we go. Here's the positive. Here's a positive. Ready? Iron sharpens iron. That word sharpen. Friction. Iron sharpens iron. So a man's friction, with his friction, he helps the countenance of his friend. Did y'all see what we were playing a while ago? BJ turned around, and I was, I was doing my Jimmy Hendrix. I wasn't paying attention. And finally, I don't know what, I, one day, I, I was so funny, because sometimes things are trying to get my attention. All of a sudden, Brandon's there popping on my arm. Come over I turned around, and BJ said, calm it down. I said, oh, okay. But I messed it up when I closed my eyes all of a sudden. I appreciated that friction from BJ. I told BJ, I said, BJ, if you hear me doing it, talk, stop me, tell me. I want you to tell me. I want, I want us to sound good. You tell me. DC, if I'm not doing it right, tell me. I want y'all to bring that friction. Because, and then sometimes DC will say, Daddy, I don't want you to play what everybody else is playing. Everybody else is playing, playing C. I want you to play E. I go, see that sounds kind of weird. He says, just trust me. They hit me last night. That's friction. He calls it something. What do you call it? Tension. Your tension. That's friction. It's creative friction. And so when you put two things, you don't sound like they're to be together together. The friction makes an awesome sound. And so sometimes you might hear me say like I'm playing something that they're not playing. It's because DC says, Daddy, it's time for your attention. It's time to get it going. And so, again, watch this. Iron sharpens iron. If everybody was just alike, like would be boring. Amen? Think about your favorite person. If everybody was like that favorite person, life would be boring. Amen? Think about your least favorite person. If everybody was like them, not only would life be boring, you want to beat yourself to death. All right. I love this one. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself as having been taken hold of. It is one thing I do, forgetting those things are behind and straining toward what is ahead. And that word straining is what? Wow. Where there is no friction, there is no movement. DC, particularly while ago, I said, DC said, after he said what he said, well, he was talking about y'all. The other man said, okay, that's said, sure, you'll preach my sermon. Yeah, so I told him, said, you just set my sermon up. He said, I'm glad my $10,000 a week can set your sermon up. <laughs> Say it. No friction, no movement. Here's my favorite one, and I'm going to let y'all go. No matter what, there's a reason, the biggest reason for me not to quit is he will never leave us. Ever. Ever. So let your conversation be without covenants and be content with such things as you have. That kind of that kind of sometimes blurs things because it's in the Elizabethan English. So I put something 
amplified a little behind it so you can see it. But it says, I have said I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'll never leave you emotionally or physically. Watch this. Then watch this. Let your character or moral disposition be free from the love of money, including greed, Arabus, lust, craving for earthly possessions. Here it goes. Listen. Be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. Be satisfied. That's not, that's not just money. That's anything you're going to have. Learn to be, learn to be satisfied with your present circumstances. And what you have. For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. And here's how it says in the Greek, it's more than just one, it's just repeated. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, or let you down, or relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. Wow. Y'all guys get ready. say anything. Just let you look at it. Think about it. Trials are not a reason to give up. Our pain is not an excuse to quit. Be strong. Your trials and your pain, your frictions, are bringing you to a place that you could not be without, any, without that. God is more concerned about your character than your comfort. If I was worried about your comfort, he'd be a sugar daddy. Y'all guys, come on up here. He'd be a sugar daddy. We don't need a sugar daddy. We need a heavenly father that takes care of us and shows us how to get through things so we can help other people get through things. I was listening yesterday as the guys are doing the Emmaus, as they're doing the Emmaus talks. And do you know there's, there's, uh, there's 15 talks during the whole weekend. They call them talks, but when the Spiritual directors do it. They're still called talks, but it's a sermon. There's other guys who are taking sermons and just, all over sermons, they're just, they're just the way they do it. And one thing I noticed about every person, every last one of them had been through something terrible. And in our group, a majority of them had even lost a child through death, through an accident, through sickness. And whenever one of these guys get up and talk, even the youngest guy yesterday, Mark Curry's son, uh, he's in his early 20s, he's a youth minister, he got up yesterday and he got in a car wreck several months back. I've never heard of this. He punctured, ripped his diaphragm. And they had to go in and cut him and put his diaphragm back together. I've never even heard of that. There were some nurses in there with us last day and said, we never heard of it. We had to go check it out. This car wreck he had. So even the youngest guy with the Yeah. 
perseverance is years ago, years, years ago, probably on my second or third, no, my first, it was my first demands, my first demands. The guy got up and he was leaving, he was the, the, the lady director and he carried on and as I listened to him, I noticed there was something different about the way he handled himself. And I just couldn't put my finger on it. There was just something different. And I found out years later that when this guy was picked to be the lady director, he could not read the right. And he drove an hour or so.
Everybody's got a need. Come on up here to the altar show. Jesus way. Ask God to touch a lady named Evelyn. She needs God's touch in her body. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, touch Evelyn. Better for your power, for your authority, touch your eye. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to touch your mouth. Lord, I ask God to touch your heart. Lord, minister to her right now. Meet every need in her life. Lord, thank you. Thank you. 